And now let's go to the next movement, which is roll back and press. And that's going to now give another depth of training to the student. I'll just go through it. We're in this position for a ward off right. If I was facing the front to start, I turn to the right corner, shift the weight back, the left hand comes under the right elbow, turn to the left, the arms drop, the left arm comes around the back, the right arm moves to the front, and then shift to the right, the left hand presses on the heel of the right hand, and I'm pressing straight forward. Once again, we're in the ward off right position with the fingertips pointing to the uh, wrist. Turn to the right corner, the weight is still 70% on the right foot. As I shift back, the shifting pulls my left arm under and pulls the right arm back until the right arm is 45 degrees. And as I turn to the left, the turning pulls the arms down. The edge of the right hand cuts down to the corner, the edge of the left hand cuts. When I get to this point, the elbow of the left hand stays close to the body, and the hand rolls up into the back. The right hand moves perpendicular and straight forward. And notice that the left palm is near the left shoulder, facing towards the rear. The right palm faces towards the rear as well. The feet are still in their original position. They haven't moved. And then I sink into the right leg, and then press up with the right leg, the left hand pressing on the right. Now here we have a situation where the right arm is moving in one plane. It's coming back, rolling this way, and in. So it's really moving in this plane across the body. The left arm is moving in this plane, which is perpendicular to the right hand. So both arms are moving in a perpendicular relationship to each other. They're moving in circles, but they're perpendicular to each other. That takes a little bit of concentration. And you're shifting back here and shifting forward here, timing it so that the left hand presses on the right, just as they're both at the center of the body. The right palm faces you, the left palm faces away. Now here again, you're sinking, sinking, and then rising up, pressing up, and breathing in. Now in addition to the fact that the arms are moving at perpendicular angles to each other, there's another factor as well. A lot of times in the form, the hips sink down into the bottom and stay at the bottom, hugging the ground. And the top of the body completes the circle that the hips began. I'll explain what that means. Here, the hips are sinking and they stay sunk. But the top of the body, from the solar plexus up, from the base of the sternum up, completes the circle. The hips don't come up. They stay down, rooted into the ground. So you're dropping everything and then the top completes the circle, and that's what brings the arms in. And now the bottom presses up, and the top comes up. So you have the top sinking with the hips, rolling around, and dropping again. And then as the bottom presses up, the top floats up again. So this is what it looks like. Here's the hips, here's the upper part. They sink, the top comes back, now the bottom comes up and the top comes up. So you have different parts of the body moving in different ways in relationship with each other and reacting to each other, just like the top of the bottom of the body and the bottom of the body. And uh, that adds a level of complexity to the form that's taking place throughout the form. So this is something that if you're really doing the form correctly, you need to do this and not just do it this way. Just like this, very stiff. Like that. You need to have that fluidity of the body 
where the top reacts to the bottom. You see the difference there. So it's a little complex. Now again, we'll get into this position, what of right position. We're going to shift to the right leg, come back, the left hand under the elbow, and turn, and then shift to the front. Let me point out one problem people have with this movement. I'll face this way to show you. When I'm turning, a lot of times people will tighten their shoulder like this. The shoulders have to be loose and relaxed. Or because they can't turn their hips that much, let's say the hips only turn this much, they'll turn their shoulders extra and twist their shoulders further than their hips. The result is that the shoulder is over here. It's not above the hip. The hip is here. The shoulder is here. And the shoulder is twisted as compared to the hips. The shoulder should be right above the hips, right above the legs. So here, you only want to turn the shoulders as much as the hips will turn. If the hips only turn this much, only turn the shoulders that much. In addition, sometimes people bring their arm all the way into the back like this and tighten up their shoulder. Only bring the left arm in line with the body, not further back like this. See how twisted that is right there? Only in line with the body and then come in. So what we're going to do now is go from the beginning up to this point and see if we got it. I'll face this direction. We'll go together. Preparation movement. The weight's in the right foot, 100%. Shift the weight to the left, almost 100%. And back to the center. Beginning movement. The weight stays 50-50. Shift the weight to the left leg. Bring the right knee in. Shift 70% to the right leg. Sort of right. Roll back and press. Turn to the right corner. Shift the weight to the rear leg. And as you're turning, the weight remains in the rear. And then shift 70% to the front. Remembering that half of your turn is sinking, half of your turn is rising up, and everything should be nice and even paced. But I think if we stop at this point, and you really try to get this little section down with all of the principles, we'll be doing very well.